Recording has started. Good morning, everybody. At 11.02, we're going to look uh, to call to order the Retirement Board for October 29th, Thursday. We'll begin with our uh, minutes from our, our last meeting on October 22nd. Would there be a motion to approve those minutes? So moved. Second. Been moved and seconded. Any final discussion on the minutes? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 The motion is carried. Okay. Uh, and Jason, we're good with correspondence, old business, nothing for today? Nothing for today, no. Okay. All right. Well, we will welcome Jeff and Sam uh, and, and turn it over to them. And uh, we appreciate you joining us today. And it's been an interesting last few days of the market. So we'll, we'll all pretend, we'll all pretend that, you know, we're, we're all good. So, uh, but let's focus on that third quarter. Uh, and uh, <laughs> So anyway, gentlemen, thank you for joining us. We'll turn it over to you both, and, and thanks again. Sounds good, and thank you, thank you, everybody. Uh, hello, and good to see everybody. I uh, hope everybody's enjoying uh, the quick turn that we've had from, uh, I guess, kind of late summer to uh, to fall. I will be uh, nice today and not point out uh, for any Penn State fans uh, that I I, I want to be nice. I don't want to point out that uh, my Indiana Hoosiers, my alma mater. Uh, upset the mighty Penn State oh, Indy Lions this past Saturday. Oh uh, my God! Was on a okay. very lucky, right. very That's lucky it. last play and a very beneficial call to us. Uh, I won't mention that. All right, thanks uh, for joining us, Jeff and Sam. We'll see you later. It's been uh... <laughs> <laughs> no. All right. Uh, but... hey, uh, <laughs> that is courage. That is courage. I will say, <laughs> and that is courageous. <laughs> well, I, mean, I remember last and here's the thing. If, if, if we were meeting in person, if we were meeting in person, I don't know if that would have happened. But you're what, three, 200 miles away from us? So. <laughs> yeah, maybe if we were in person, I would have, uh, you know, worn a red shirt and a uh, <laughs> same tie. <laughs> All right. Okay. Hey, fair enough. Hey, you, you know, it's a game of inches. It's a game of inches. Yep. Exactly. I think this was our maybe first or second win in like 20 years. So, uh, you know, let us have one. All right. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, but, uh, but, but getting back to business here, uh, so happy to be here and to review the, the, the third quarter. Um, as uh, you pointed out, Commissioner Pipe, uh, kind of some wild things going on in the market, Italy, which uh, we'll be happy to get to. Um, so, uh, just as we usually do a little bit of an update on the firm here, we ended the quarter with $1.1 in AUM. Uh, we just recently brought on a new client. This is going to be after the third quarter, so uh, kind of really happening now at the beginning of the fourth quarter, that we're bringing on a new client for our Enhanced, enhanced 50 strategy. Um, so it's nice to see, and I know we've kind of talked about that as, as one of our newer strategies over the past couple of years, uh, one where we've uh, kind of seen significant growth. Um, so we're, uh, you know, it's nice to see that we're expanding our client base for this strategy. Uh, you know, it was also nice a situation where uh, the the client, uh, it's an RIA based in uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, had come across it and reached out to us uh, for us to kind of join their platform. Um, so nice to see a little bit of growth there. Uh, what I'll mention here in terms of, uh, you know, it's been a very fairly wild year for the markets. Um, so in a sense, I'm, I'm pleased to report that we've exhibited net positive new clients and client flows versus clients lost this year to the tune of uh, three clients that have been brought in and, and we've only lost one client um, that was a kind of a small account uh, earlier in the year and for a kind of a net net inflows of, of new to of uh, you know net clients gained of about 15 million those were all earlier in the year uh, it was actually kind of a fairly quiet third quarter from that perspective um, but just uh, you know making a note that uh, you know, it's kind of odd that as, as uh, you know, again, um, wild as a year as it's been, and, and particularly for the industry overall, uh, that it was actually kind of fairly quiet for 20 the third quarter, which uh, in a way was a good thing. Uh, one last uh, point to make, uh, since we don't have too much in terms of an update on the firm, in terms of uh, our strategies and assets, one thing I'll mention, and uh, I, I, I included this uh, in the email to Jason yesterday, we received word about two weeks ago that dividend select received a five-star rating from Morningstar, something that we were quite pleased about. And as you may know, Morningstar is one of the most commonly utilized sources in the industry for fund and strategy analysis. 
Um, so really, you know, we were uh, at Twin quite pleased to, to learn about that, that it got a five-star rating out of 458 funds in the category. Um, so, uh, you know, just a nice thing to, to have one uh, kind of a, you know, fe feather in our cap um, and, you know, for you as well to be uh, utilizing that strategy. I'd sent a copy of the report to Jason yesterday. So in case anyone would like to see it uh, and see, uh, you know, the report for your strategy that got a five-star rating, uh, he has a copy of that. Um, so unless there's any questions on the firm, I'll uh, move over to the quarter. All right, seeing none, uh, you know, recall dividend select, it's a lower volatility strategy, uh, trying to over time provide a smoother uh, stream of returns that will provide a lower risk than the market. Uh, looking at the returns for the third quarter, uh, we ended the third quarter with a balance, an account balance of 15.8 million and a return of 8.7%. And it was really interesting if we kind of break this down by month uh, in the sense that uh, and a little bit to serve as a bit of a precursor for what Jeff will be talking about in a moment when we kind of dive a little bit deeper into what really happened in the markets in the quarter. But really, it was kind of a tale of two different markets. In the late summer months of July and August, and wow, I mean, now that I say that, uh, kind of seems like it was, July and August late summer was uh, a fairly long time ago. It seems like a lot's happened since. But the market really had two very strong months in, in being up uh, in the 5 to 7% range in, in July and August with very little volatility. And as expected in that environment, our portfolio largely kept pace, but did trail a little bit, but, but for the most part did keep pace in those two up months. However, in September, where the market saw and, and volatility returned and we saw uh, concerns driving the market down just shy of about 4%, your portfolio significantly outperformed in more of the typical fashion that we'd expect. So your portfolio outperformed the market uh, by 2.6%, essentially making up for the prior two months. So we end the quarter just about in line with the market when the market had a quarter where it was up about 9%. So uh, while the month isn't over, I apologize that, that this here on page eight is a little bit dated. Uh, just after, you know, we had to, to get it done and go through compliance. But uh, while the month isn't over, I'm happy to provide a little bit of a flash report for the month of October, in which we saw a continuation of trend from September, where here in October, the market has been down, um, but your portfolio is outperforming. Your portfolio is, is down 2.4% as of yesterday, uh, better than the market's return month to date of 2.7%. Um, so with that, uh, unless there's any questions uh, just on the returns, I'm happy to turn it over to Jeff uh, to dive a little bit deeper into uh, what happened in the quarter in terms of the markets and our little bit of an outlook going forward. Great. Thanks, Sam. And um, thank you. It's great to see uh, uh, Commissioner Pike, Higgins, uh, uh, Controller Jason and Colleen. And so thank you all for joining us uh, and for having us. So for the third quarter, as Sam already mentioned, the period from April through August was the best five-month period for the stock market since 1938. Market just continued up. It really turned in September. The barometer turned negative in September. Even though it was positive in October prior to yesterday, after yesterday's fall, the uh, market is now down 2.7%, uh, as Sam said, uh, month to date. Uh, so the market has really turned. Uh, I will say that what we've also seen turn is kind of the concentration in the market. So you'll remember that up and through August, the market kind of advanced with advancing with few stocks leading the market. Now that the market has kind of uh, taken a turn, it's also broadened. And so you see a, a broader uh, market you saw in September eight out of 11 sectors outperforming the market as compared to the five years ending or the three years ending September, which only two sectors outperformed the market. So the market really has broadened. And if you look at your performance, how did you get an 8.7% close to 9% return? Well, one of the things that added value as the market broadened, particularly in September, but for the quarter overall, your overweight to consumer staples, your overweight to industrials, which are more consistent dividend growing stocks as compared to energy or real estate, 
you were overweighted to the outperforming sectors and underweighted to energies and real estate, which actually underperformed. So, so that's kind of an overview of, of your quarter to just give you to take a step back and think about what what we think about on on terms of a market review on page uh, ten. Uh, remember that that the uh, the February March bear market, the fastest ever bear market, which was followed by the best five months ever for the for the stock market, but the fastest ever bear market was really the anomaly and the performance of dividend growing strategies of low volatility strategies was anomalous in February March. It's been much more uh, in line uh, with history uh, since then. But just as a reminder, uh, that led to you know you've had a market that growth has dominated value, uh, that uh, large has dominated small stocks. You see that reversal the last two months with small stocks. You see value stocks in September and month to date in October starting to come back. Uh, if we go to the next page, the next page, page 11, is a page we showed you last quarter. There's nothing new here. We're just reminding you. Uh, we we would we too were disappointed that our strategy uh, didn't outperform in that very short 23 day period from February 19th to March 23rd. We remind you that while we didn't outperform, other volatility, low volatility, other dividend strategies did worse. Again, uh, we did better than them, but not better than the market, which is our hope. But things have really changed since then. But if you kind of go to the next page, you could see the impact of these low volatility and high dividend strategies not outperforming. The 12 month trailing return through September of both the dividend aristocrats, this is not our strategy. Our strategy, the dividend select has done better than both of these this year. But these two, indices, market indices, S&P market indices, both underperform the overall market by the most they have in over 20 years. And so you'll notice in the last 20 years, most of the time, the red or the blue line is up, meaning that most of the time, dividend aristocrats, consistent dividend growers, or less volatile stocks on average outperform the market. But of course, the last period being the exception, really in part because of that kind of uh, impact in the first quarter. Just to remind you, the reason why you have this strategy is to protect you on the downside. I know that uh, that that active strategies, uh, uh, you know, may have disappointed. But remember that the one thing that you get when you get a passive strategy is you guarantee yourself 100 percent of the loss on the downside. And remember that losses are more costly to you than wins. And so just as a reminder on page 13, if you look at all negative months, the dividend select strategy doesn't win in all of them. It wins in, call it seven out of 10, doesn't win in all of them, but it wins on average, it beats the market. In fact, it's the only segment of the market that beats the market. And what's really important is protecting you when really the proverbial stuff really hits the fan on page 14, and on this page, you could look at all months. There have been 42 months since 1981 that the markets declined by 5% or more. And in those months, three out of four of those months, 74% of the time, our strategy outperforms. And if we looked at this year, just for what it's worth, while we didn't do well in, in February and March, from a downside perspective, we've more than made up for it in September and October. Because if you look at this page, this page, and we again, we had to produce this before yesterday. So this page goes through the 26th, but I'll update you through yesterday. But just looking at this page, since June, since again, kind of even within the market's rally, June, July, August, there's still been, uh, not in August, but in July, and certainly a lot more in September, and here in October, there have been down days where the market's down more than 1%. This is showing you every day the market declines by more than 1%. It's done so 14 days since June 1st through the 26th. If you now include yesterday when the market was down 3.53%, it's done it 15 times. How many of those 15 days did your strategy outperform? 14 of the 15 days. And in fact, in those 15 days, the market is now down 29.4%.
adding yesterday's 3.5% return, negative, and you're only down 25. You're now outperforming the market by 4.4% in the 15 days that has been down more than 1%. You've made back 4 plus 4.4% 4 .4 money. So the strategy really is doing its job here ever since kind of that anomalous period of that first quarter. The strategy is really, really doing its job. So I'll take a, 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 a uh, you know, to, to take a step back, uh, uh, I'll just remind you of kind of some of the market themes and your portfolio exposures just to kind of finish up on 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 uh, reminding you that for the three years and five years ending in September, the market was really, really um, uh, narrow, led by few stocks, led by only two sectors outperforming. In the third quarter, you'll notice it was a much more normal quarter, again, all because of September. In September, you had eight out of 11 winning. So for the overall quarter, you had five sectors winning, five sectors losing, and one sector tying the market. But again, the point is that you were overweighted to staples, which outperformed the market last quarter. You were overweighted to industrials, which outperformed the market. And you were underweighted to energy, which was still down. And to real estate, the two worst performing sectors where you were underexposed. And you could see those exposures on page 17. This is your current portfolio. Your current portfolio, as you see, is, again, you're overweighted to staples. That's your biggest overweight. Your One of your biggest underweights is to real estate and then uh, and, and energies. So those are the exposures from, from a sector basis. The other point is that you do have, when you're focusing on high quality dividend growing stocks, you're going to get a little more value and you're going to get more defensive. I mean, by definition, we're trying to give you a defensive portfolio. So so, so you could see you do have a bit of value exposure. You do have a bit of a defensive exposure. But the overall point on this page on the bottom right is your beta. Your beta of your portfolio is 0 0.88, which means you're going to be less risky than the market. And that's really the goal. The portfolio that you're buying from, to put it in a different perspective, from a longer-term perspective on page 18, from a longer-term perspective, the, you're buying companies, you're, the Twi Dividend Select Club stocks are stocks who have consistently grown their dividends. So if you look at the middle section of this page, look at the 10-year dividend growth rate, the five-year, the three-year, the one-year, in all cases, the dividend growth rate of your stocks are far greater than that of the market. And I have to say, sitting here today, we don't know what's going to happen with the uh, economy. COVID cases, unfortunately, are going up. The, um, the uh, outcome of the election is still very much uncertain. And the outcome of whether there's a blue wave sweep or not a blue wave, if there'll still be mixed Congress, Senate, and, uh, and presidential uh uh, uh, pieces of the government. Uh, so, so there's a lot of uncertainty. Earnings, you know, clearly third quarter was a really nice comeback. Who knows what's going to actually happen here in the fourth quarter and certainly early next year if more places have to close down. And, and, and so the one thing that you really can bet on consistently is to find stocks that consistently grow their dividends. And remember that that back in the early part of the year, the market sold stocks into discriminately. They sold stocks into discriminately, and in fact, they were worried that stocks would have to cut their dividends. The stocks in your portfolio haven't cut their dividends. The consistent dividend growers haven't cut their dividends. They're still growing at a rate far better than the market on a three-year basis, still well above 10%. So I, I, we are very, very comfortable with the way this strategy has performed uh, post that very, very short-term anomalous period. Uh, it's outperformed both in September and October, two down months. It's outperformed on all down days, 14 out of 15 down days uh, uh, since kind of the turnaround. So that's kind of, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the strategy. Just to give you a little look ahead, just to give you a little look ahead, the stock market, we think, is still going to have a lot of volatility for the reasons we just mentioned. For the reasons we just mentioned, um, we think that there's going to be tremendous volatility. And so we think that's going to remain high. We do think that the turnaround we're starting to see 
with growth to value, the broadening of the markets will continue over the next many years. Because we've seen these turning points before. We've seen them in 2000, 2001, and in an environment where valuation matters, where more stocks participate in the overall market, it's better for a diversified strategy, and especially one that focuses on less volatile stocks and outperforms on the downside. So, so just to kind of go ahead and maybe look at looking at the quarter, just to what we expect, because this is a presidential election, as we all know, on Tuesday. And what we did, and this is a part of our monthly report that we provided at the beginning of the month to Jason and Colleen. I'm not sure if everyone on the board has seen it, so we thought it would be worth showing you this table. We're looking at this table at the average monthly return for October, November, December, for all months back to 1962, all non-presidential election years up on top, and all presidential election years on the bottom. There have been 44 years in that period with non-presidential. There have been 14 years of presidential election. So I admit that 14 is not a huge number, but it's still reasonable to look at this data and say, well, what might we expect? So the first comment I'll say, and we pointed this out to Jason and to Colleen, is that interestingly, even though October is historically a great month for the market, it's up 1.73% on average in months, in the month of October, in non-presidential election years. It's changed a sign in the presidential election years. And interestingly, who knows where we'll end up after tomorrow, but the month of October was positive until yesterday, and then it turned negative, and it's now down 2.7%, as Sam mentioned. So certainly consistent with what we've seen in prior October election years. The good news is that November is the best month on average for the market in both election years as well as non-election years. Now, notice, however, that volatility is a lot higher in October and November than it is historically in December. The final column, the average risk column, is much lower for December, certainly in election years, but even in non-election years, as compared to October and December. So I would tell you that I, we expect the volatility we're seeing here in October to continue in November, but overall, the next two months on average are positive months. In fact, November and December historically are the two best months for the market. So we do think that hopefully where the market is sitting here today at about a little less than a 3% return, it's about 2.8% year to date through yesterday, we do think the market will end up positive. We do think that that should help the arc, but it's going to be a rocky road even in the next two plus months, two months and two days. So that's kind of an overview of, um, of, of what we think about looking forward. So I'm happy now to take any questions. We do have more material, obviously, but I want to take a break and give you a chance, the commissioners and the board, a chance to ask any questions or give us any comments. Thank you, Jeff. Any any feedback, questions, comments for uh, Am or Jeff at this time? I'm here. Okay. Well, with, with as you said, it's with five days until the election, we are hustling to uh, make sure everything is in place and ready to go. Um, we're actually getting some new machines delivered today here at the Willowbank building and um, uh, printing our poll books. It is a, it's an operation, operation. Um, so, but if we could just touch a little bit on what happened over the last few days, um, you know, uh, just to get your sense on this, uh, if we we're either gonna have a divided, divided government or blue wave, do you have any feedback on on if 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 it goes one way or the other, markets better, markets, um, you know, when we hit the ground running, I mean, if we get a stimulus, it seems like that would calm the market, another another round of stimulus, or you you think our is our so is our fund positioned if there's going to be a blue wave stimulus or if it's continued to be divided government. Okay, great. Uh, great question, Mike. And Sam certainly can, uh, you know, ch chime in as well. 
I would say that that I think that in either case, certainly a blue wave is a definite. But even if it ends up with a Democratic president and the Senate remains Republican, it's still going to be a dramatic push for all uh, all of the um, uh, 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 government agencies to generate and provide stimulus. So I think, uh, Commissioner Pipe, there will be stimulus after the election either way, because if if the Republicans lose the president but maintain the Senate, they're going to be really worried about two years from now and losing the Senate. So they're going to make sure that that they're going to provide the stimulus. Obviously, if it's a blue wave, it's going to be a huge stimulus and perhaps spending on areas uh, uh, that might not be needed, but it is going to be huge stimulus. So I think either way, there's going to be stimulus. And we think that overall, while the market is going to be highly uncertain, potentially all depends on the transition of power, right? If uh, if uh, if Biden does win, but it's not a clear, immediate win, and it takes a while for uh, Trump to concede, uh, that will provide more uncertainty and more volatility, perhaps, in early November. But I think that once that's settled, yes, I think the market goes up. And even if it doesn't, even if the stimulus doesn't come until next year, the expectation of the stimulus going to come is going to help things in November and December. So we think that overall, things uh, are, uh, the stimulus will be forthcoming. And, and we think that our portfolio is well positioned for that. Uh, uh, obviously, if there is stimulus, uh, you would expect a continuation of a rebound of some of the service economy. You'd you'd uh, the value kinds of stocks, the stocks that had been beaten down, and you'd expect the kind of rotation we've been seeing the last really month and a half. You know, uh, September and October. I think you'll continue to see it. That's going to only prove positive for for um, for our portfolio. And just so thank to you. Add to that, and just to add to that, I mean. We're not trying to say we're political prognosticators. Uh, you know, we would probably t defer to, to you, our, our friends that are publicly elected officials that know more about uh, politics and polls and, and reading the things like that. Um, you know, the, the, the market, we would say, and, and this probably uh, also goes in line with some of the polls and, and even some of the prediction markets that probably expecting Biden win at this point. Obviously, there's still a lot of uncertainty. In the last couple of days, we've had kind of a confluence of events kind of coming together, driving that uncertainty, one being just getting closer to the election. And as we get closer, probably a little bit more uncertainty uh, than you might have had months ago because it's you know now coming to fruition to the, the lack of, of stimulus uh, and kind of what the market was expecting. So you might have a little bit of selling off on that news. And then third being the rise in COVID cases, which is you know probably one of the, the, the you know the more important aspects. Um, in terms of long term uh, for the or you know more shorter term, but kind of longer term in the sense over the next couple months for the economy. So as Jeff pointed out, you know after the election, there's probably a little bit more incentive for you know all parties involved to get some type of uh, agreement and uh, compromise to get some stimulus as cases have been rising. Um, additionally, though, and to the point of uh, you know the portfolio, as Jeff touched on today, and we've talked about in kind of previous quarterly meetings, what happened in kind of the February, March timeframe, uh, where even in the down market, it was kind of uh, an anomaly that these types of stocks, these these more defensive, you know, stable dividend payers and growers didn't, didn't you know, the market didn't react to those as we would kind of expect. And I think part of that was in hindsight, because uh, of all the potential concerns with the stimulus at the time of, of restricting dividend payments and whatnot, you know, we haven't really been hearing that in the news as, as part of the current package. So, you know, the hope would at least be that, uh, you know, that concern wouldn't be, wouldn't, you know, come come this time around. Um, obviously, uh, you know, we're, we don't have uh, our ears to the ground inside uh, the Capitol to know <laughs> how those discussions go. But, you know, again, at least the expectation would be that, um, you know, they'd be performing better and, and wouldn't kind of have that situation occur again. Certainly unprecedented times. That that is helpful though to hear a little bit about your your 
take on it. And we're we're not holding you to it. I think it's just more of a general sense about you know the next few months and weeks ahead. So okay, so a lot's going to depend on what happens on the night the the night of the election, the days after as we count the votes. Uh, any other any other thoughts, questions, uh, feedback for Jeff or Sam? Okay. Hearing none, then we will look. Uh, let's see what else we have on our agenda. We have nothing else. Um, gentlemen, thank you very much for your time today. We hope you're well. We hope you stay safe, and we'll uh, look forward to seeing you uh, most likely virtually as we enter in the new year in January. And so again, we hope you're uh, you stay well and safe, and have a great holiday season. And we'll talk to you next next year. Thank you thank very much, everybody. Uh, we wish you hope everything goes smoothly next week and the days after and in the coming days ahead. Um, and as you said, since, uh, you know, I guess we won't be seeing you until 2021, that hope everyone most importantly stays healthy, um, is well, and has a wonderful holiday season. And um, we look forward to seeing you in 2021. Okay. Thank you as well. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Everybody. Thank you, gentlemen, very much. Uh, Bye-bye. We'll, we'll look for a motion yeah. then to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Take care, everybody. See you guys. Thanks. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks, Jeff.